I think we're recording now. We are good to go. Um, what else do I have to say about all of this here? Um, I'm proud of you guys. You guys just keep going. You're almost done this, and um, we've got next week's test there. Your nervous assignment, I think, is due in a couple weeks, so there's lots of time for that. Um, I like the feedback that I'm getting as far as you guys emailing me for questions. Please don't stop. Now is not the time to take your foot off the gas, so to speak. Okay? Uh, now's the time to gear down and close the door because my kids are playing downstairs. All right. But how are you guys doing? Is Are there any questions there that need answering? Um, the... Um, if there's any questions on a test or anything there that's bothering you, email me what those questions are and we'll set up a WebEx or something, okay? Um, as far as posting the test answers go, I can't. Uh, I can, but I, I'm, I can't because it just it takes me 10 to 12, 14 okay. hours to actually make a test. And uh, But if, if there are some questions there you guys need answers to, uh, let me know and we'll sort those out right there, okay? Uh, whatever you guys need, uh, but I think you guys are on track. And if there's any issues, let me know. But other than that, if we're good to go, I'll go. Are we good? Let's go. Uh, the PowerPoint, what is going on here, man? Everything has changed. Come on, man. I just want to share the screen. Shh. Share the screen. Okay. Share. Can you guys see that? Is everything okay? Just a thumbs up. Okay, that's what I needed. Everything's different on my side. Thanks, Andrea. It's all good. Um, perfect. Anatomy of blood vessels. This one, this lecture, it might blow your mind. I don't know. It just might because we don't think of blood vessels as muscle. We don't think, we just think of them as hollow tubes, right? But there's a lot more to them than you would imagine. So this is a good one and it ties in with last week, okay? And I purposely did that there when I made the syllabus, eh? That, uh, so uh, next week's test is just on CVS, the cardiovascular system, right? Everything there from last week and this week. And uh, I'm not relying on any other blackboard technicians or anything. Your test will open next week at 8, and it will close at 8, and everything will be fine. I will make sure of it. Pinky swear. Pinky swear. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, pulmonary and systemic uh, circulations. That should make sense to you now. We talked about that there last week there. there's The, the CVS has two systems, right? It's pumping blood to the systemic. Systemic is just another word for body. Okay. But then there's also the pulmonary system, which is pumping blood there to and from the lungs. Right. So there's two systems. Today we're going to talk about their, uh, uh, the differences there between arteries, capillaries, veins. Okay. We're going to list some functions, layers of them. We're going to talk about these words there, conductance, resistance, exchange, capacitance and all this okay we're gonna list some major arteries you know what I mean um, like I would never ask uh, you to list all the arteries or veins or whatever you know but uh, important ones like you remember there there was a couple of important arteries and veins on the heart that I talked about good <laughs> uh, we're gonna list all the veins there uh, special circulation there, like, um, uh, I think I omitted fetal, okay, uh, from here, but this one here, we're, we're going to talk about their, uh, the cir uh, circulation there that goes on with the brain. There's a blood brain barrier, right? Your brain doesn't have any blood, but you know, if this is your brain here, the blood vessels, they come and they don't touch, but the brain can get oxygen that way. It's uh, just uh, it's another preventative measure from keeping bugs out of your brain. Because if there's no blood that can get to your brain, well, then no bugs can get to your brain. Um, 
yeah, we'll talk about Pulse as well. I've even thrown in a little bit of extra. So the uh, this PowerPoint is a little different there than the ones you have, but uh, I can uh, I'll post this one after anyway. Okay. Um, I just threw this in here. The I just wanted to show you at any given point in time, where is your blood? Um, you got your aorta, and you remember. What we're talking about here when you're talking about the CV CVS is like, just think about the uh, Mississippi River. And uh, I've never been to the Mississippi, you know, or seen the Mississippi, but just the whole idea that you have a major, major river. We'll call that the aorta. Major pressure. It's just used for transport. But then as the river starts to, I don't know, what do you call them? The tributaries, little rivers that come off. Those are what we call our uh, arteries, uh, and then arterials, and you see what's happening there is that big Mississippi aorta pressure, fast moving blood slows down. And then eventually it slows down so much that you've got these microscopic, okay, and we call these capillaries. And you'll see there that the majority, I think the, uh, you can quote me on this, but somewhere in the range of 60% of your blood at any given point in time is locked up in the capillaries, okay? And um, five liters of blood, okay? Um, just have a look here at the these circuits here, okay? We've kind of gone through this, you know, as... Uh, uh, we went into the the macro system there last week there of the CVS, but you'll see there the blood vessels they're hollow tool uh, they're just hollow tubes right? They begin and end at the heart, okay? And uh, I really like this cartoon; it's great. The and you have to think there that see the blood is traveling around here, and basically uh, every minute, all five liters of your blood goes through your heart. That's what's going on there. And that's uh, resting, okay, or somewhere in there. And um, the you have to think there that the blood comes around, like when you're uh, talking about the endocrine system and hormones, right? Like uh, we talked uh, about there, uh, the um, you know you got the uh, pituitary, the hypothalamus, you got your anterior pituitary, your posterior pituitary, right, that are producing uh, these different uh, target hormones, and yeah, okay, so I'm going to make this um, hormone there in the uh, posterior pituitary there, and it's going to target, let's say, my big toe. But really, it's not because the posterior pituitary only makes two. Um, but anyway, it's making this hormone that's targeted there for my big toe. Well, it, the hormones eventually make it to the blood, uh, the, you know, the blood system, and... It's not, it doesn't go like a beeline to my big toe. It's just dumped into the blood and kind of through randomization, right? Those hormones will eventually make it to my big toe. And I'll explain more of this there when we get into the kidneys. Um, because all the blood gets filtered by the kidneys, but all the blood doesn't get filtered by the kidneys at a certain time. It's not like all the blood is in an assembly line and, okay, I'm, I'm waiting to get filtered. No, if the blood doesn't get filtered there this time, oh, okay, next time, you know, it's this kind of randomization there of the blood. So there's your pulmonary and systemic systems there. Um, the just, just kind of, a, you know, just going back into the Mississippi, uh, just the whole idea, right? There's your heart, okay? Blood comes out there, the uh, left ventricle, out the aorta, okay? And then your arterial system, like just massive, right? Or your aorta is massive, but then your arteries get smaller. But there's still a lot of pressure, okay, in the arteries. So there's no oxygen nutrients being exchanged when there's high pressure, Okay. Only when it gets down into here. And you'll see here, massive pressure. And then it starts to siphon off, right? These tributaries. And then eventually more until the blood right here is so slow that it's able there to do nutrient exchange. So just kind of a snapshot there. 
Da -da -da -da. The blood vessel walls. Okay, there are three layers of the blood vessel walls. Instead of just reading these to you, I'm just going to show them to you. Okay, uh, sorry. There's your tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia, which is also has another name here. I'll show you. Okay, so you have a look here. This is the anatomy here of a blood vessel. Okay, and in this one here, it's an artery. And you have a look at this. Compare it to a vein. And you remember there that these guys here, they are smooth muscle. They're muscle. Okay, there's an elastic quality, especially to the artery. Because when the blood is coming out of the heart and out the aorta, I'm telling you, and I said this there last week, I'll say it again, the aorta gets a smackdown every heartbeat for the rest of your life. And I mean it's... And it never stops. The aorta takes a beating. It's massive pressure over your entire life. So these arteries... The aorta, all these uh, oxygen carrying, okay, they are tough as nails. They're thick, they're spongy, they're strong, they're elastic, okay, because they have to take the pressure, all right. And you'll see here your, um, your tunica intima, okay, your tunica media. You see it all here, and there's your uh, tunica externa, which they call here the adventitia. Okay, so it's um, you just have a look here. You just see how thick these arteries are because the blood pressure is high coming out of the heart because the heart is only responsible for getting that blood to the big toe. Okay, generally speaking. How does the blood get back to the heart from my big toe? Well, here now, you see, the uh, uh, oxygenated blood has been carried to my big toe. All right. It's dumped off the oxygen. It's picked up the CO2, any other nutrients there. My big toe is big and fat and happy and healthy, right? It's got everything it needs. Now the blood is now starting to travel back to the heart. But you have a look here at these veins. There's not much to them. And there really isn't. And there's a huge similarity to uh, the veins and the lymph. Um, I might have a shot of the uh, lymph. Aha! There it is right there. And you'll see this is your um, this is a, a lymph vessel here. And you'll see that it's kind of the same as a vein. It's flimsy. Okay? It's nothing like uh, an artery. Artery is solid, elastic, tough as nails. These things are just flim flimsy, hollow vessels. And the heart really, and just like in the lymph here, the heart is not involved in moving that lymph. The heart isn't really involved in moving the, um, the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. So how does that blood get back? How does that lymph get back? Skeletal muscle movement. Okay, moving around, walking, running, doing things. And through this process, you see what happens there. It's kind of like a, I want to say an elevator shaft, but it's not. But, you know, it, the blood is down here, my big toe, and through me moving, it sloshes up and comes back down because of gravity. And you'll see here that you've got these flaps in the veins and the lymph and the blood comes up sloshes back down and holds it and then through more muscle movement choom, choom, goes all the way up like this back to the heart so that's how these guys go okay and the lymph works the same way uh, they still have all your three tunicas know your tunicas I'll throw a couple uh, questions on there about that okay so that's your major difference there between your um, uh, your arteries and your veins Okay, veins are very thin, very flimsy, not a lot of elasticity. They're just, I don't know, think of them as kind of like empty balloons. 
you know. But these guys here, man, these are tough as nails. They're strong, spongy, able to take the wax. Um, this is just another shot. If you didn't like this one, well, then you can have this one here. And it's all the same thing here, okay? And just different layers that goes on, okay? There's your capillaries there. Have a look at those. Not too uh, bad. Um, a really good word I like is lumen. I don't know. I just like it. And lumen just means whole. And like you think of your blood vessels. Okay, they're just tubes, right? Well, what's in the tube? This is what we call a lumen. It just means a whole. And you also, your entire digestive system is a lumen. The whole thing. Open your mouth, down your esophagus, down your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all the way down, it's a lumen. Okay, so we're, uh, I'm, we're going to use that word again. So, lumen. <laughs> Uh, again, just another shot of the three layers. And you can see that, again, these are by three different publishers. And you can see here there the difference between a vein and an artery. There's a lot more muscle going on here. Okay. Um, blood vessels, what they do. Uh, there are a couple of words here that I'll get you on a question or two. Ar arterial uh, arteries, uh, conductance vessels. Okay, arterials, resistance. Now, look at these words here, and it, it kind of reflects what I've said there before. The arteries, the big guns, the Mississippi, for conducting things, for moving blood. That's it. That's what the aorta and the arteries are for. The arterials, now they oh, slow that river down. Okay, and that's the whole point of the arterials. There's really no oxygen exchange going on in there because they're still pretty high pressure. They're still pretty fast moving. So from the Mississippi, the arteries, wham, they get slow rate right down into the arterials. And then when it gets to the capillaries, double wham, slows rate right down to a snail's pace. And in the capillaries there, that's the only place where exchange happens nutrients vitamins oxygen carbon dioxide whatever you name it but that's the only place capillaries veins and venules and then eventually back to the vena cava it's kind of like the reverse mississippi right you're going upstream and it works the same way okay so have a look at those. These four words, they came there uh, right from uh, your um, from your textbook. So have a look at them there. Not too bad. It makes pretty good sense. Okay. Um, just some more shots here of the blood vessels. You'll see here there the, uh, the elasticity. Okay. The thickness of each of these guys here. Okay. Uh, the vessels vary in, in length, diameter, wall thickness, okay? And you'll have a look here, just an elastic artery. Here we have a, a muscle artery, okay? Arterials here. I actually have some good shots there of uh, plaque, um, which weren't in uh, this um, textbook's PowerPoints, but I don't know why. Uh, but I threw them in there. Uh, I have my own PowerPoints that I add in and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So I'll show you there at the end the plaque. Uh, same as teeth, but this occurs on the inside of the blood vessels. And the uh, excess plaque can be uh, very problematic. Okay, we'll get into that. And you have a, here a look at the veins and venules. Okay, here's, uh, you know, um, capillaries there. They're microscopic. Okay, and so you just have a look at these and away you go. Um, also, hopefully there, uh, I posted all of the movies that I have from McGraw-Hill. I don't know if I'm breaking any copyright laws, but uh, I don't really care. I want you guys to have those movies and uh, let me, I haven't heard anything, so I assume that everything is working. And if it's not, let me know. Um, but, uh, we put some movies in, I've just taken them right from the list. So, uh, um, we can have a look at these movies there, but, um, 
Let me know if there's any issues with that, and I hope that they help. Do we have access code? I tried to watch one. You couldn't? Okay, so you couldn't watch uh, the movies. All right. Well, what we'll do there is we'll take a 10-minute break or something in between these two PowerPoints there, and uh, we'll follow up with that, and we'll see if these movies go. And we'll uh, see if we can get these movies going there for you. Um, capillaries there are the site of uh, exchange of gases and nutrients where oxygen and food molecules are transferred from the blood to the body cells. Okay. These guys here are only composed of endothelial cells, the inner layer. So the arteries and the veins, they have, okay, all of the different layers, the tunicas there that we were talking about. The capillaries, though, they don't. They just have this inner endoth uh, endothelial layer okay from the arteries and that allows there for the uh, transport of uh, nutrients because you think these arteries um, and then, and then, and then, uh, yeah like how is oxygen and nutrients and vitamins going to get out of this and into the cells how does carbon dioxide from the cells get in it doesn't because you've got this thick muscle layer in here all right so that's why uh, I just wanted to show you capillary. And you'll see here the capillaries. They don't have any of this. They just have this endothelial layer in here. That's all they are. So they don't have any of the tunicas. They just have the inside. Okay. Uh, another shot of it here. There you go. Just the endothelial layer on the inside. That is what a capillary is. Doesn't have any of this other stuff. Uh, what else we got? Um, almost uh, all cells of the body are no more than 100 micrometers from a capillary. So these capillaries go everywhere. They're everywhere. And um, just to show you there, my numbers are off, but uh, I read somewhere there that every pound of fat that we put on, I think it adds, is it 50 kilometers or 500 kilometers of extra blood vessels. And you think another 100 kilometers you're, that your blood, uh, your heart has to pump. So, uh, because these capillaries go everywhere. Okay. Uh, capillary beds can be opened or closed with, these are uh, kind of interesting. It's something called a precapillary sphincter. And just to show you this right here, um, well, this is just another shot of your capillary here. And uh, you have your aorta, your art artery, arterial. And you remember, it's just about whoa, slowing things down, slowing things down. And then it gets into the capillaries here. Exchange happens. And then back to the heart. Another but you'll see here that you see uh, here's an arterial. And it's carrying oxygen and blood to my big toe throughout the network there of uh, capillaries. But let's say that there is an issue. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe where uh, there's excessive blood loss or something traumatic has happened on another part of the body. Well, what the, um, these cells, they're getting their oxygen from the blood ray right here. But if there's not an emergency, they can go without for a little bit. And you'll see what happens is it's kind of like uh, the uh, faucet on the tap. You can turn these on or turn them off as need be, because if if I'm if there's an issue there, my big toe, well, my right finger doesn't need oxygen right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off all of the taps that are unnecessary. So now the blood, instead of going all the way through this network here, it's going to go right through here, go back up to the heart, and then get to where it needs to go in an emergency situation and as you can see right here okay so these are called precapillary sphincters a sphincter is just a ring of muscle okay we have one there at the top of the stomach okay called your cardiac sphincter we have one at the bottom of the stomach called your uh that's your pyloric sphincter okay we have the anus as well we have these rings of muscle, but you'll see there, we have them all over the place. These are called precapillary sphincters. Uh, let's have a look at the movie, shall we?
And please let me know if you can hear it or if there's any issues. <laughs> oh, I'm not logged in, am I? Interesting. Well, that is a little different. That's not what I was looking for. That's not the movie I was... Uh, my course content. Why does everything do? Why does why does everything have to change? I don't know. Let's try this again, shall we? There we go. There we go. Capillaries are thin-walled blood vessels with an arterial and venous end. Their thin walls and narrow diameter are optimal for the exchange of fluid gases, nutrients, and waste between blood and tissues of the body. This process is called capillary exchange. In general, fluid moves out of capillaries at their arterial ends. Most, but not all, of that fluid re-enters at their venous ends. The forces that drive fluid and its dissolved contents into and out of capillaries are net hydrostatic pressure, which is the difference between blood and interstitial fluid pressures, and oncotic pressure, which is the um don't worry about any of these oncotic pressure and all this kind of, i just wanted to show you there at the microscopic level what exactly is happening and we will get more into this there when we get into uh respiration okay because i'm going to show you there that the body is so cheap and stingy it has figured out a way to move oxygen and carbon dioxide uh, for free and uh, so there we go the difference between blood and interstitial colloid osmotic pressures net filtration pressure is the difference between net hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure this regulates the inward and outward movement of fluid at each end of the capillary at the arterial end of the capillary, a positive net filtration pressure favors movement of fluid from the blood into the interstitial space. For example, the difference between a net hydrostatic pressure of 33 millimeters mercury and an oncotic pressure of 20 millimeters mercury results in a net filtration pressure of 13 millimeters mercury that forces fluid out of the capillary. And you see what they're talking about here is you guys have all heard this. Maybe you guys uh, haven't seen the, um, but we've talked about uh, osmosis and these kinds of things there earlier in the course. The Through the process of dis uh, diffusion and osmosis as well, like if I take uh, just a bottle of strong perfume and I, maybe I'm in a gymnasium, okay, which is, you know, a big room, and I go over to the far corner of the gymnasium and I just go, right against the wall okay 20 meters from me on the other side within about five ten minutes the whole gym is going to smell like perfume because things move from a high concentration to a low concentration things generally go from a high pressure to a lower pressure that's generally how things go and we'll get more into this I just wanted to show you, I'm not really interested in all these net filter, filtration pressure. I'm not, no. But I just wanted to show you guys what is going on. Things move from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. And that's how the oxygen in your blood, which has a higher concentration of oxygen in your blood, and you have a lower concentration of oxygen in your cells, higher concentration blood jumps right into the cells lower concentration so we'll talk more about this kind of stuff there as we get on okay uh there are your capillaries there Wonder, wonderful stuff um i put this in here uh the because i couldn't find a good shot there of the vein but then at the last minute there i realized that uh this is a pretty good shot here of what a vein is you see these flaps in here right so the lymph that I put in here, it's kind of the same banana. It's got these flaps here, the lymph moves up and drops down. And in that process, the flaps close, keeping, and so it can move up the ladder, okay? 
Um, differences there between, uh, this is a real uh, electron micrograph there of artery and vein. And you'll see that the artery is, it has a structure. It's, uh, I can't say it's rigid, but it's, it's strong, okay? Very elastic, able to take a hit, okay? And then look at your vein. It's a good vein, all right? But these are flimsy. It doesn't need all of the, all of the thickness that's involved in an artery because it's not taking the every heartbeat, okay? And uh, so interesting there. Uh, I kind of like that. And there's some differences there that you all can read over, but uh, that's how these guys go. Uh, naming the aorta two systems here. You have a look here. The aorta, the path it follows as it courses through the body. Now, let's see if I can zoom in a bit. And we saw this there last week. You have the ascending aorta, which is going up. Okay. And that's, that's coming right there from the left ventricle. All right. Left, uh, left, uh, um, yeah, left atrium, left ventricle, out the aorta. And then you have the aortic arch. It's curving around. Okay. Just amazing how how it's just, uh, I don't know, I love it, I love it. It's just incredible how this evolutionarily just over billion, millions of years, love it. And then we have the descending aorta, okay, which now covers uh, all the uh, blood supply there for the rest of the body here. And you'll have a look, uh, locations within the body cavity there, The it's in, stretches down this is your thoracic cavity and this is your abdominal okay have a look at those pretty uh easy stuff now the branches of the aorta we could do a doctoral we could probably do a hundred doctoral degrees on this and we're not going to okay um you have branches there the aorta and you can have a look here there's your left and right coronary arteries, okay? Where the, that's what I would like you guys to know, okay? Um, that's there from the heart for supplying uh, blood supply there for the heart. And you can see here of all that's going on. So your ascending aorta, okay? Bang, right off the start, your heart gets blood. Because the you remember there, the blood that's going through the right atrium, right ventricle, out the lungs, comes back the left atrium, down the left ventricle, out the aorta, to the body. The heart isn't getting anything out of that. Okay? But right off the bat, the uh, ascending aorta, bang, you got the left and right coronary arteries right there. So the, blood, the heart gets first kick at the can, so to speak. Okay? Uh, so again... Here's your uh, aortic arch here, and you'll see there that it branches right off, okay, your brachiocephalic artery, okay, and you'll see there, I have a video there about how the brain, how the blood comes all up, and we'll show you that there, okay. Um, on your aortic arch there, you got your brachiocephalic, your left common carotid, your left subclavian artery, you know what I mean? I'm not... I would never ask you to memorize these, but since it's an online test, you don't have to memorize them. So there they are, okay? And just make sure that you have this PowerPoint to, uh, kicking around there for next week's test, okay? Because it might pick off one or two of these. Not a big deal. Um, what else we got? Now we're into the descending, okay? So we're down in here, okay? You got your celiac trunk, your mesenteric uh, arteries, and just by the way, the your mesentery. That's a word there that uh, you'll see there. Uh, I'll show it there next week there uh, for digestion, but it's kind of like a fat blanket, all right. And it hold like all of your or all of your organs there, your stomach, your pancreas, all of these, your spleen, your liver. They're not just all floating around in there, right? Everything has its place. There's fat holding everything in place. And then you have this mesentery, this kind of fat blanket that just kind of 
tucks all the organs in and keeps them all nice. So that's in this area here. Renal arteries, okay? You figure out what those are. Your iliacs, all right? So have a look at these. Again, there might be one in here, but you don't have to memorize it, okay? Uh, the lower extremities there, you'll see, okay? There are your uh, iliac artery, your common, there are your common iliacs, okay? And you just have a look here. Um, a very dangerous, uh, the uh, people don't think, but you'll see there your femoral artery. Many a people have died by whacking that, okay? And, oh yeah, it's, it's a big one right in the center of your leg, so you know what I mean? It's right inside the meat so that, you know, it's for protection, right? Because that's why your arteries tend to be deeper because uh, A, there's more blood being pumped per shot than anywhere else. B, there's lots of pressure. And uh, you could go on YouTube and you can see, you know, hockey players that have got uh, arteries cut and you'll see the, the squirt, the pump, okay? And it doesn't take long to bleed out. And I mean, you've only got five liters of blood. You pop one of these, like a femoral artery here, you've got minutes to live. You know, and so it's, it's, it's good stuff. Okay, so you guys can have a look at these ones there. I might ask you one, you know, and it's not, uh, not too crazy. Um, getting into there to the veins, okay. Um, I've shown you this there cartoon, and I apologize there. It's kind of it looks distorted, but uh, just trying to uh, <clears throat> maybe that's a little better. But the um, there's your aorta comes down right your arteries, which then you know arterial blood, okay, which then into the capillaries, right? That's where we are, okay. There's your diaphragm, okay. So just to give you a, a uh, a reference frame of where we're going, right? Here's your ascending aorta, okay? All this kind of stuff. But now, blood coming there from my big toe, okay? Uh, venules, the veins, okay? And then eventually makes it up to the inferior vena cava, okay? Which is now the opposite of the aorta, right? And it's going back up to the right atrium. And then you've got these guys here. This is called your superior vena cava. Okay. And this supplies uh, uh, blood there to the head and the upper limbs. And you can see in here the uh, superior uh, vena cava there drains the head and shoulders and upper extremities. The inferior vena cava drains all the regions there below the diaphragm. So you guys can have a look at all this there. Not too bad, not too bad. Nice little caricature there. Um, and these guys, I don't know why this publisher does this uh, for this book, but uh, like, give me a better picture than this. I tried to blow it up. I don't know how to other than just zooming in, but you guys can have a look here at all the major arteries of the system, okay? Uh, am I gonna ask for all these? Absolutely not, but if anything, have a read of all these because a lot of these words you just might already know, okay? And it's all, it's talking about uh, regions of the body, okay? Superior mesenteric artery, all right? Mesentery, that means that's the fat blanket there that covers the uh, abdominal region. Lumbar artery, okay? Um, renal artery, all these guys here. So this is a nice little caricature, probably better there than the, than the slides there I just showed you there a couple minutes ago. Um, but yeah, this is a nice little slide here. I would know, or don't know it, just have it ready in a testing situation, okay? Um, what do we got going on here? Veins that empty into the superior vena cava, okay? These ones here, your brachial, auxiliary, subclavian, brachiocephalic, your jugular, okay? Jugular drains the brain, goes right into the superior vena cava, okay? Um, what do we got here? Let's see if this one works. What do we got here? The hepatic 
attic portal system is a oh that's what i wanted to and this is one of the these are veins there that empty into the inferior right this is the lower okay so this is below the diaphragm all right and your hepatic that's just another word for liver and this is a different one kind of i hate this mouse there you go and what happens is we'll get more into this but again it's just kind of foreshadowing what's going to go on there next week because there there absolutely is this interrelatedness between the systems there has to be no system works independently of, uh, of any other okay and what we'll get into there uh next week there with digestion you eat your banana goes down your esophagus into your stomach, gets broken down into a slurry, goes into your small intestine, the lumen of your small intestine there, where it is now absorbed, that banana, the nutrients, whatever your body needs is now absorbed, okay, into the blood of the surrounding the small intestine. Well, that blood goes nowhere else except to the liver. So any of the, it's a safety precaution. Anything that's extracted from food, and food came from outside the outside world, it could pose a potential danger. So, the nutrients from that banana are absorbed by the small intestine <clears throat> into the blood, and this is what we call the, hepata, the hepatic portal system. And this blood goes right to the liver, the liver inspects it all, siphons anything else that, that doesn't like in there, and then this blood is now accepted into the cardiovascular system. But we'll show you all this there. It's a pretty good little movie. <clears throat> um, where are we here? Okay, good. Let's go. A series of veins that transports blood from abdominal organs directly to the liver. This gives the liver first access to substances absorbed from the digestive tract. These organs include the lower esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, spleen, pancreas, and gallbladder. The hepatic portal vein is the largest vessel of the hepatic portal system. It is formed by the union of the splenic and superior mesenteric veins. And you'll see here that the hepatic portal vein here, <clears throat> you know, it's a pretty big sucker here and it's going, it's carrying everything that was um, absorbed or anything there that was picked up there by the spleen, picked up there by the small intestine, picked up there by the large intestine. And because the large intestine and small intestine pick up different things, which we'll get into there next week. And you'll see there, there that anything that is picked up absorbed goes right to the liver that's why like uh, alcohol when uh, um, and even coca-cola you know like just the whole idea there that um, these drinks that are just enormously high in sugar uh, just you know uh, an alcoholic drink or juice or coca-cola is just sugar water and what happens is you drink that and it immediately picked up there by the small intestine and this whack of sugar just hits the liver. And the liver actually just kind of goes, oh. And now insulin is produced and all this. And it actually, you, your liver fibrillates, kind of freaks out. All right. So we'll get more into that there. Let's finish the video. The splenic vein drains the spleen, pancreas, and portions of the large intestine. The superior mesenteric vein drains the majority of the small and portions of the large intestine. Blood from the lower esophagus, portions of the stomach, and the gallbladder drains directly into the hepatic portal vein. After entering the liver, the hepatic portal vein branches numerous times to end as channels called hepatic sinusoids. Liver cells lining the sinusoids detoxify metabolic waste, synthesize and secrete bile and plasma proteins, as well as synthesize and store glycogen. After filtering through the sinusoids, blood collects in central veins. Throughout the liver, thousands of central veins unite to form hepatic veins. 
the hepatic veins exit the liver and immediately join the inferior vena cava. You see, once the uh, blood has been kind of filtered and anything there that, you know, uh, doesn't need to be there is out, bang, right into the vena cava, back into the CVS. Okay. Uh, what do we got here now? That'll be goo. Um, the uh, special circulations there, uh, well, there's a fetal circulation, which I'm not going to go into. Okay, so I will not test you on any type of fetal circulation. How about we just deal with uh, adult circulation before we get into fetal, shall we? All right, I'll let another teacher get you on uh, fetal circulation. But uh, blood supply to the head and the brain, blood supply to the liver, okay, and that should be hepatic portal circulation, but we've just covered that anyway. We'll talk about head and brain in a bit. And you'll see here, the, uh, the brain is nourished by the carotid and vertebral arteries, okay? Uh, the internal carotids ascend uh, to the base of the brain. The uh, vertebral arteries there ascend uh, to the, uh, also to the base of the brain there, okay, where they merge. And there's lots down here there. The artery that commonly suffers from uh, occlusion, okay, plaque, is the common carotid. And we'll get more into plaque there. Plaque is just plaque on the inside, blocking uh, blood from going, all right? So you guys can have a look at this. Uh, there's a video right here that I want to show, okay? And um, the Circle of Willis, but I'll show you guys the movie there and you guys can have a see. Perfect. See, these videos are awesome. And if you guys can't get, cannot get access to them, I'll figure out another way because you see these videos, they're a minute and a half long. They deal with one topic. You get it. You move on. So that's why I like them. Blood flows to the brain through the internal carotid, vertebral, and basilar arteries. The terminal branches of the internal carotid arteries are the anterior and middle cerebral arteries. They supply blood to 80% of the cerebrum. The vertebral arteries enter the cranial cavity through the foramen magnum. They unite to form a single basilar artery on the ventral aspect of the brainstem. That should make, even if some of this, you know what I mean? I'm not going to go into, uh, you know, crazy detail. Again, your test is going to be multiple choice. What can I do? But just words in there, you know, uh, they unite to form a single basilar artery, and it comes up there through the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum, you remember there? <clears throat> okay, the hole in the base of the skull. The terminal branches of the basilar artery, the posterior cerebral arteries, supply the occipital and temporal lobes of the cerebrum. At the base of the brain, branches of the internal carotid and basilar arteries form an anastomosis or an end-to-end -end communication between vessels. This is called the cerebral arterial circle, also known as the circle of Willis. The circle of Willis provides alternate routes for blood to reach the brain. Blood is drained from the brain through small veins that empty into venous channels called dural venous sinuses. Blood in the superior sagittal sinus passes to the confluence of sinuses. Blood in the inferior sagittal sinus and the great cerebral vein, which unite to form the straight sinus, also pass to the confluence of sinuses. From here, blood courses through the right and left transverse and sigmoid sinuses. The sigmoid sinuses end at the jugular foramina at the base of the skull, where they are continuous with the internal jugular veins. So you'll see there that the circle, circle of Willis, again, it's another evolutionary, uh, evolutionary safeguard. If something happens when we, uh, um, and this way is blocked, well, we've still got another way for the brain to get oxygen. Outstanding. Circle of Willis, okay? So, there's your circle circle of Willis there, okay? Um, 
we just saw the movie there. You guys saw it. Very good. Um, there's your Venus drain, which the movie covers as well. Okay. Again, where are you going? Is this too much? It might be. But uh, where you guys will eventually be going, go and get a nursing degree or whatever. Yeah, they may go into this. Okay, so it's all good. Am I going to go crazy detail like this? Probably not. Am I going to pick uh, Circle of Willis? I just might. All right. Um, there's your hepatic portal system, which we've already uh, covered. Okay. And uh, just the uh, different, there's... Um, uh, two different uh, veins there that uh, move them, okay, and what was it, uh, where was that now, the hepatic portal system, let me come back to that one there and I'll show it to you, okay, maybe watch the video again, um, but the liver there receives two blood supplies from the portal vein and the hepatic artery, okay, and you guys can have a read of this and uh, definitely watch the movie again because I will. It's important. Um, it's just the whole idea there with uh, the liver and protecting the liver. The um, like uh, alcohol, when you drink it, it, goes right into the small intestine and immediately is absorbed by the small intestine and then hits the liver. That's why prolonged uh, periods of drinking uh, alcohol over the years, that's what causes the liver there uh, to fail because it's getting uh, the, the alcohol, a fatty liver, okay? And the liver is the first, it takes the hit first from the alcohol. Um, what is plaque in the arteries? Okay, cholesterol, fatty substances, cellular waste, and fibrin, just a mishmash, okay? Um, the, this is generally caused from animal fats. Uh, if you look at butter, the difference there between butter and vegetable oil. Butter comes from uh, cows, from animals. Okay, Oil comes from plants. And they're both fat. You know, if you started to chug a bottle of olive oil, it, you know what I mean? It's absolutely unhealthy. But from a cardiovascular point of view, the vegetable oil is not a main contributor to plaque buildup to heart disease because the oil is liquid and it flows through the veins. But animal solids like butter, these kinds of things, they're solid at room temperature. So therefore, they will coagulate. And one of them settles down from gravity, okay? And then another one will attract to it, and another one, and another one. And that's if there's excess <clears throat> cholesterol in the system at the time. Okay. And you can see here that <clears throat> normal blood throw, uh, flow, it has this space to go through. Whether you call it diameter or radius, it's clean. It's a good blood vessel. It's good to go. But then you look at this one here. We probably knocked off about 60% of our available blood volume. Okay, but the blood still got to get through. It's still got to get to my big toe. So who's got to work harder? The heart. Okay, it's got to get the same amount of blood through this space here. Um, what causes plaque buildup? Okay, the inner lining of arteries because damage uh, due to high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, smoking, these kinds of things. Um, Smoking, the adverse effects of it are well known, documented, okay? Um, the uh, <clears throat> cancer and all this kind of stuff. But what else smoking does is it attacks the elasticity of the blood vessels. Because remember those arteries, arterioles, right? Those things are like uh, basketballs as far as elasticity goes, okay? They're tough. Okay, they're elastic, they can take the pressure, they can take the hit, but over prolonged periods of uh, time of smoking, what happens is that elasticity fades and they become, the word that's coming to mind is brittle, but they become less strong. If there's a better word, let me know. But that, okay, so that's what's going on there. Uh, great word, I like this one, write this one down. Don't try and say it. 
It's not easy to say. Atherosclerosis. Yeah, I can't even say it. But I will get you on that one. Okay? That is just this. Do a quick Google, uh, Google search of this, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay? Um, how, does black, uh, how does plaque buildup cause damage? Well, you'll see here, and we're getting into a bit of uh, fluid dynamics here, but we're just kind of touching base here. But uh, you'll see that if it's a nice, smooth arterial wall, and this is the same for a pipe carrying water. It's the same stuff. And if the blood is all coming through, if the water in your pipe is all coming through, it's going to flow nice and smooth, okay? Because that's how these guys are designed, okay? Smooth, less resistance. And you have to think that the water in the pipe or blood in the artery, is the it's hitting the side of the wall. And it's hitting the side of the wall, but you see here the walls are all smooth, they're flat, so the amount of resistance pushing back is less. So therefore, the heart doesn't have to work as hard. Not only there has my tube shrunk, instead of being able to pump this much blood at any given point in time, now I can only pump this much blood at this point right here. This, the blood leading up, it's not a smooth wall anymore. It's all just haphazard and... And what happens is the blood starts to roll. The water in the pipe starts to move around when it shouldn't be. And when the water is moving around, see, if you look at the blood right here, it's actually moving up. And it shouldn't be. The blood down here should be staying down here. You know what I mean, hypothetically speaking. It, everything should have its place. But now, all this blood here, and this blood is coming up, which is now pushing the, this blood up. So now the blood is getting pushed up, and if it's getting pushed up now, it's going to hit the side. And now it might go back. You've got, and you see, you've got these loop-de-loops, and your heart has to deal with this. So, and you see now, the, with this, you've, uh, the, uh, the walls uh, are destroyed. Kind of, you know, I mean, you can get better, but, you know, uh, and what's going on now is that the heart has got to push all this blood that's moving left, right, up, down, doing somersaults and all that. The blood has still got to make it to my big toe. Doesn't matter. Heart's got to deal with it. And that's, that's a major problem right here is this fluid dynamics. Um, increase in blood pressure due to in increase in resistance. Okay, all of these guys, the blood vessels have resistance. But in this situation here, it's minimal. In here, it's horrendous. Okay? Uh, this increase of plaque can eventually lead to a blood clot. Okay? All right? Uh, blocking the artery. Okay? Stopping the blood flow. And then any cells that are here dying for oxygen, they ain't going to get it. Okay? And if the oxygen flow to the heart is reduced, a heart attack can occur. Okay? Uh, oh, hi, Harley. All right. Um, this is a good one here. Assessment points. And you know what? This is awesome. And I recommend doing this on yourself. See if you can feel these. You got your temporal artery. Facial artery. Here's your carotid. Sure, that's a good one. Brachial radial, femoral. Some of these you won't be able to feel, but maybe you just might. Popliteal, behind the knee. I think I said there week one. I always like that word. You might see it again. All right, so have a look at these. And you guys as PSWs, eventually nurses and professors, okay? You guys are gonna be first aid responders. And if you don't have that ticket, uh, I don't know if that's included in your course, but I, I'm pretty sure it would be a prerequisite for any type of PSW uh, program. Um, but if it's not, um, you should be. And first responders, you would know this. Okay? Let, and, and I don't want to get gruesome here, but let's say you, you find a person and their right arm is gone. 
Okay. Well, how are you going to find a radial artery if they don't have any arms? Okay. You know, and then you go for the femoral artery. This one here is a nice one here by the ankle. You can feel that one all the time. So in an emergency, you, you just never know as a first responder, nurse, PSW, wh what you're walking into, right? And so knowing where to find a pulse could be the difference between saving a patient and them. Yeah. Good one. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Uh, let's take uh, 10 minutes. I'll see you guys back here at 115. And, uh, yeah, we'll do the, uh, the second PowerPoint is considerably shorter. So I'm thinking maybe half an hour max, but, uh, go take 10 and we'll see y'all back. Um, now I think I, I think I shut everyone out last week and I'm not going to do that there this time. So stop sharing. And okay. So we're all good. I've uh, stopped the video. We'll see you guys back in 10. Bye, guys.